Hey guys, Jason here with a word to the wise. It's the 14th. Um, I just want to touch on a few things first. Uh, the Olympics are over. I'm pretty sure. I mean, other than little clips, you know, I think I went to a restaurant and they had something on, but I didn't watch anything any of it i didn't care i i would have loved to watch the skateboarding but um i didn't i always loved the women's volleyball didn't watch that either i seen a lot of the clips that are being shared of the break dancing which i thought days of noah covered it best i think in one of his last videos i heard the ending ceremony again you know just evil being shown uh, I saw I think rise had a, a clip a 20 minute thing I got about halfway through it and here again it's like they can sit there and say that they are comfortable with doing it the actors you know are not the ones that are portraying this or they're not they are portraying it but they are not the ones that are are writing these scripts and putting all this together you know are they knowledgeable of what they are doing i i don't know if they go over it in detail i'm not trying to put anything on any one person but it's the people that are putting the show together yes they know what they are doing the ones that are funding it and making uh putting together the costumes and what's going to happen next and telling everybody how the storyboard is going to work obviously they know what's going on here again i am not concerned with the obvious evils of the world that's the obviousness that if anybody and that's why it's so popular right now everybody is pointing out how disgusting this all is it's obvious but it's the people now that are going to come out of the woodwork um i think on point preparedness had a video about the canadian trucker situation years ago and he he pulled up the scriptures uh of like matthew 24 talking about the vultures where the where the dead bodies are the vultures will gather and it's like yes where the the lost who do not understand scripture those who are still in the milk and not in the meat those are the ones that can easily be overtaken when these false churches come in and they speak up and they speak out and say why we need to come together and bring people into their fold and they can feast on them. So that's the whole thing of why you need to have understanding and to share that, yes, the obvious evils that's going to be easy if those kind of people want to take over the world and then somehow you know tell us that we need to you know bow to them and do you know the worship of them and their god no you guys are morons no it's a false christianity that's going to come out that we need to be weary of you know you have the whole trump train you know everybody's showing that clip where he just spilled that little remark I'm not Christian, but I love the Christians and everybody out there. Oh, you just come out and vote and we're going to have it all fixed up for next time. And blah, 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 blah. Who's going to win? I don't know. I, I, I can't say that I have time to care. It's, I mean, less than 100 days now, probably 90 days till election period. I'm sure any kind of crazy chaos can come out. Um, there's going to be a lot of looking at and fine tooth combing over Revelation 13, I believe. But it's those people that are going to come out and say, you know, we need to stay together and we need to back. The, look at these guys are evil and we need to pull together. And, you know, don't don't worry about our differences. And we need to, you know, abide in, in brotherly love. And doesn't matter what kind of mindset these people have and how they think and one for the time peace land and da, 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 da. it's like all these kinds of things they can give you 99% truth but it's that little one thing that that sets you off in your mind that says no I've already talked way too long about this I'm sorry um, I want to jump into something because now that the Olympics are done we're gonna be going into football season humongous moneymaker I think that they're going to be um, 
That's usually when you start seeing these kind of movements coming out. A lot of the commercials that are always um, repetitive with messages that you know are obvious things that they want to hammer into people's heads. Um, let me get a sip of coffee. So what I'm looking at now and kind of just kind of watching for, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if we have seen wars and rumors of wars, and we've seen the love of many kind of growing cold, going into this bug season into winter time, we'll say, and seeing a rise in my work, there is a huge rise in the bug that has been going around that they have, you know, the simple little swab for lots of people all around me. I'm probably going to, I usually get it seemingly, I like seem to test uh, in January. So that's months away, but I'm sure I'll probably get some sort of a, a transition into winter bug. <clears throat> so let me go on. What I'm looking at and that's, I'm kind of weary about is I think we have to kind of keep an idea of, of a false, thing happening in that timepiece land that shows that God is on their side and that they are the chosen and I know the scriptures are the prophets and I know that a lot of things point and they're all circling around that but it's the it's those that say they are and are not that in Revelation chapter 2 verses, uh, I think, 9, and I think it's in chapter 3 verse 9, those who say they are and are not of that timepiece land, but are deceivers. I'm going to leave it at that. So, I think that Gog and Magog are going to be what I think coming up soon people and not saying that the scripture the scriptural Gog and Magog but that's what the people are going to be saying has happened is going to happen look at what's going on this is them coming against us this is exactly what the Bible says in Ezekiel 38 but they never will point to Revelation 20 to compare apples to apples and I always wonder like why do you not why do you not it's the only other place it's the only place in the new testament where this is spoken of and you are not showing the prophets and where it is being revealed the prophets prophesy about the revelation right so i'm going to start off with luke because luke uh, chapter 21 is very similar to Matthew 24, that whole chapter talking about wars and rumors of wars, the destruction of the temple, things to see in when you know the time is near. And it talks about the abomination that makes desolate. And so that, that would mean that something might be coming. And the only thing that I can think of in Revelation that that might be speaking of is the MOTB. Otherwise, where else in scripture is that spoken of at all, ever? Um, and you can find the abomination also spoken in, in Daniel chapter 11. So let me just try to make some room here for some scripture to be posted. Um, Luke 21 Jesus foretells the destruction of Jerusalem. So this is just a title. It's not scripture. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then those who are in Judea flee to the mountains and let those who are inside the city depart. And let not those who are out in the country enter it. Enter it. For these are the days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. I'm going to leave it short. I'm going to leave it right at that. So when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Those who are in the city depart, leave. 
That is what is still to come, I believe. I'm not a scholar, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm just sharing scripture. So, now, let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Now, you go and you read the first part, verses 1 through 6. It talks about the MOTB. It talks about Satan being locked and bound in, in the pit. It talks about those who are resurrected, those who had faith and did not partake in the, in the beast system. And then after, and so now, the defeat of Satan. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released out of his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for the battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea. And they march up over the broad plain of the earth and surround the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the, and the false prophet are. Let me just turn the page here. Where they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So just a, an ending. So fire comes down. Now before I go into Ezekiel 38, I just want to touch on 13. Fire came down from heaven and consumed the enemies. Now, in chapter 13 in Revelation, the second beast, the one that rises out of the earth, it had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. It's, it exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence, making the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast. But the mortal wound was healed... It performed great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. Now, what does God do, God do against Gog and Magog? He makes fire come down and consumes them. But in the second beast, before the MOTB is to be brought upon, the second beast, now I think the second beast, if you're looking at the one that comes out of the earth like Apollyon and his hordes, I believe those are going to be the false prophets, the deception that we need to worry about. I don't fully understand yet, but it's interesting that in the second beast, it has the power to make fire come down from heaven. What does that mean? How will that look? Is it going to be like the, they're going to have somebody standing there and they're going to say, well, God, strike this man down and... You know, somebody gets kind of blasted. Where'd that come from? You know, wow, they must have some sort of connection with the Lord. He's zapping people because they said so. I don't know. How will they do this? What does that mean? The fire come down. People could say it's like that Oppenheimer movie. I don't know. Is it going to be like literal fire breathing? Whoosh somehow flying it down from way up in the sky like a flamethrower? I don't know. Is it going to be like lasers? Phasers? Tasers? I don't know. That's why I can only do this in the morning. And I'm on a second or third cup of coffee right now. So I'm trying to be as thorough as I can. <laughs> All right, I'm going to finish with this. I promise. So if I can get this under 20 minutes, that'd be great. So the prophecy against God. Now, you can look at um, Ezekiel 37, the Valley of Dry Bones, where it talks about that valley of all the dead bodies and dead bones and how everything gets sewn back together and God breathes life back into them and they stand up and they live. Is that part, is that the resurrection being spoken of in, in Revelation 20? I mean, it's worth kind of looking at it and trying to compare it. Revelation really sums things up very much. And then you're looking at, at Ezekiel and you're looking through these chapters. You literally have pages that are being broken down into a paragraph in Revelation. So you really have to sit there and comb through it and, and see. 
So Ezekiel 38, I'm going to start at 7. And keep in mind Revelation 20 where it talks about Satan being released from his prison, gathering the armies from the four corners, and coming against the city. So verse 7. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will muster, you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples among upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely all of them you will advance coming on like a storm you will be like a cloud covering the land you and all your hordes and many people with you so i'm, I'm just trying to keep that in mind just those verses now i'm going to go over to um 17 like i said you can read through this this is the english standard version so 17 down to 22 or to 23. So thus says the Lord God, are you he who whom I spoke in the former days by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who in those days prophesied for years that I would bring you against them. But on that day, the day that Gog shall come, Gog, shall come against the land of Israel, declares the Lord God, my wrath will be roused in my anger. For in my jealousy and in my blazing wrath, I declare on that day, there shall be a great quake in the land of Israel. The fish of the sea and the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep on the ground and all the people who are on the face of the, of the earth shall quake at my presence. And the mountains shall be thrown down, and the cliffs shall fall, and every wall shall tumble to the ground. I will, stum I will summon a sword against Gog. All my mountains, declares the Lord God, every man's sword will be against his brother. With pestilence and bloodshed I will enter into judgment with him. And I will rain upon him and his hordes and on the many people who are with him torrential rains, and hailstones and fire and sulfur or brimstone so i will will show my greatness and my holiness and make myself known in the eyes of many nations and then they will know that i am the lord now verse chapter 39 goes into everything that has happened to them the burying and the and disposing of bodies um then you go to chapter 40 and it's the vision of the new temple so in Revelation, where you see uh, Gog and Magog being talked about, if you go into the next chapter 21, it discusses and talks about seeing the new, the new heaven and the new earth coming down. Is there a period of a new temple being there and then that being swept aside as well? And then the new heaven and new earth and then God's temple? Because it's a little bit different because in Revelation, it says there is no need of a temple for God and Jesus are, I think, the light of it or the temple of it, you know, or that, that, that is, that is it. I, I'm not, you know, that's not what I'm bringing, but I'm bringing that. So with that sulfur, fire rains down and burns Gog. And that's being spoken of after the thousand years of of the people that died for the MOTB, which hasn't happened yet, a thousand years later, those people will be resurrected after that, that system time period. And just to not confuse it with uh, chapter 16, the last, the last bowl, um, there's flashes of lightning, rumbling, peals of thunder, and a great earthquake such as never been on the earth. The city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and God remembered Babylon the great to make her drink of the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath, and every island and no mountains were found, and great hailstones, about a hundred pounds each, fell from heaven on the people. 
and they curse for the, the plague of the hailstones. Now, in, in that Gog, it does say that. It does say that hailstones and rain came down, but it doesn't talk about fire, or it doesn't talk about fire in chapter 16. So that is my dividingness of it, but everything else talking about Gog, G-O-G, G -O -G, specifically, should tell everybody that this comes later. So Revelation 13 talking about they were able to deceive the people by even having fire come down from heaven. That is the concern I have. What will that be? Because then when that time period happens, if there is such a time and an event, shortly after that, the people will be bringing, they'll bring upon the earth that whole marking system. I'll leave it at that. Just a word of the wise.